call the meeting to order. Roll call of Alderman. Heisler. Here. Kinsella. Here. Meyer. Here. Hall. Here. Anderson. Rajewitz. Here. Carpenter. Here. Hart. Here. Silsby. Here. Hayden. Here. Seibert. Here. Martinson. Here. Elmore. Here. Schneider. Here. Musgrove. Here. Arla. Here. Alderman Anderson's excused. Roll call of department heads. Questions about this uh, about this public hearing. Joe, thank you. If there is none, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close the public hearing. This is pretty much a formality. It's pretty routine. Everything's been all the due diligence has been done. But by by law, we need to open this up in case anybody had questions publicly or wanted to go on the record with any statement. Okay. Thank you very much. We I closed the public hearing. This time we will open public participation of tonight's meeting. If you have a Anything you'd like to say, please step up to the microphone, give your name and address, and please keep your comments to approximately two to three minutes. Anyone? Yes, sir. Stuart Lander, 318 South 29th Street, Belleville. As Andy said in Lillian Helmets play Little Foxes, if there's not a, if there ain't a law against it, there ought to be. Lindenwood University plays fast, fast and loose with the people's safety. Once they had a four-foot hole next to a sidewalk, and I even called them uh, 24 hours ahead of time, and, and they said, it's been taken care of, mind your own business. Well, the next day, I walked by there, and that hole has not even been filled in, marked, or nothing. And just a few days ago, there was a, what looked like a, a pudgy pit from Vietnam. It was about a two or three foot, about a two foot hole with a jagged pipe sticking right out of the center, about a foot off the sidewalk, uh, the uh, street, and about two foot off the sidewalk. And that was there for two days until I finally called them and told them, you know, you got a hazard out there. And then they finally come out the next day, I guess, and put an orange corner on it. I guess they got a high liability insurance and some high price lawyers. The house on 15th, on 15 North 15th Street looks like it's got a trash dump in the backyard, but he's got some Democratic signs out front, so I guess they get a break on that. Uh, <laughs> no, sir, they won't. <laughs> well, it's been there for years. And a scrap pickup, uh, just this afternoon, I witnessed uh, what could have been a fight 
over some kid in a dumpster and uh, finally so one party won and they, I see them trotting down to the tin bin with a couple of bags of tin. But with all the unemployed people in this uh, city, I would think uh, the big thinkers in this town should be able to come up with ways of getting unemployed people and your independent trash pickers to make a little money to tie them over the Obama lousy economy instead of having to hire city people to pick up this stuff. Let the little guy make a few bucks. Thank you. Okay. Next, sir, over there. Michael Heinberg, 701 Centerville. The agenda didn't specify which TIF is funding the Citizens Park uh, project that was there. Was that TIF 3? TIF 3. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, September 2011, the library encumbered $250,000, yet only $216,000 is being applied towards the renovation project. What happened with the other $34,000? At this point, nothing. <coughs> I mean, hold on. I'm sorry. That money was applied for a new roof on the West Branch. Oh, that's right. That's right. I stand corrected. Thank you. That's why you guys are supposed to be here. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that went towards the new roof, the difference in the new roof on the West Branch. Because we had some of that money left from the energy, uh, right? The energy situation. All right. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Everybody. My name is Lee Griffin. I've resided in Middleville since 1968. I have an ongoing concern of business, Mr. Lee's Bargains, at 3709 Northville. I'm a homeowner and I'm a landlord. I had several occupancy tickets rented against me uh, about several months ago. And the same day that article came out saying that Middleville Police Department she used their times more constructively than worry about who's sleeping with who. Officer Fulkerson came to my house harassing my tenants, trying to stop me from making a living in this town. I've had 10 tickets issued in the last 30 days on this occupancy situation. I'm not trying to have no lawsuit, but every time I go into the housing the health department, it's all police oriented. If one police officer don't like you in there, nobody likes you. They're harassing me, they're harassing my tenants, I went to my esteemed friend and Alderman Gabby Richards about it. He said he was going to have a mayor with you. Mayor, I talked to you about two weeks ago about it, right? And you told me it wasn't Felkerson, it wasn't the new officer who took Stiebel's place, remember? No. You told me that Clay no. was involved. No, I, don't, I told you that if you had a complaint about the police department, you need to lodge it with Chief Clay. Well, this is what my, play, my complaint is. I don't commit no crimes around here. I have businesses that I've established in this town. I act in good faith. I don't want my tenants harassed. I don't want the police coming to my house. I got five occupancy tickets now. They're tying me up in court on this nonsensical stuff. And I'm tired of it. If I have to get with the Justice Department, if I, wait a minute, I'm talking. If I have to file a lawsuit, when you go in that housing and African Americans come up in there, it's nothing but white people. You ain't have a black paper pusher. The last black inspector you had was Henry Johnson. And he was the one in 1997 that had that consent decree that said you at least have hired 28 African-American men and women. You don't even have a black paper pushing there, man. Did you know that? You have one, not one black inspector. I know it's qualified black inspectors around here. And I don't want to go up in here and be harassed, have officers come to my house, banging on my door, did damage to my properties. I had to bring a complaint to this young man right here, Mr. Clay and Assistant Chief Sparker, in reference to officers coming up here and harassing my 11-year-old son, had tears in his eyes on a situation that was unfounded. But the chief did the right thing. I have never respect for him. But I'm tired of these officers. I think you got too many polices in there. And let me tell you what's going on. You're gonna have another lawsuit here on your hand because I'm tired of this. I'm trying to make a living. I don't rob, I don't steal, I don't kill, I don't break it. I try to make an honest dog. I don't have no $60,000 job like Mr. Sable, but I'm getting tickets from the treasurer's department. I'm getting tickets from him on nonsensical stuff that shouldn't even have to be an issue. And I'm tired of it. 
And if I have to file a lawsuit or get the Justice Department back here, I'm all for that. But I'm coming to you guys letting you know I'm tired of this unnecessary stuff. And you're trying to get a crime bill passed, you got too many polices over there now. You don't have a black inspector nowhere. And that's ridiculous. You got an African American population here of pretty about 10 to 12,000 blacks here. But we don't even have a black inspector. Every time we go here, we have to deal with these people. Focusing, harassing me, knocking holes in my window. You gotta see what she's done to my property because she's trying to circumvent the Fourth Amendment and get in my house without a search warrant. I want properties, I never had no complaints. I don't sell drugs on my property. I have tenants, some of them are homeless. They'd rather see these homeless people out on the streets than me trying to provide a place for them. And I'm tired of it. I'm tired of people passing a book. Again, I've been here since 1968. I'm a law-abiding citizen, and I'm tired of being harassed. I made my position known to Mr. Barfield, who's a retired police officer. I made it been known to Mr. Sable, and I'm tired of it. So if I have to go to the Justice Department or whatever we got to do to make some changes, I'm ready to make some changes. Thank you. I have nothing else to say. Okay, Mr. Griffin, though, what? when you stopped me the other morning when I was at the cleaners. And I told you what's happening. You told me Clay was behind that situation. I, I told you you need to make an appointment with Chief Clay. Sir, have we have I talked to you about this and we're trying to get a mayor with the mayor about this issue? Okay, I got stacks of documents where we, these office, offices have been totally egregious. If you want to, the chief's here right now. The chief and I will meet with you. But I told you I do not Well let's get that meeting and I have my lawyer and we'll get this thing resolved. Because I'm getting tired of this harassment. I gotta be in court every day instead of trying to make a living. Dealing with this bullshit that's occupancy stuff. That's one sided. And you, I, I, don't you know you don't have no blacks in that place at all? And it's all police warranted? Do you know that though? We have a lot more to Housing, health, and sanitation is a very crucial issue to the survival of this city. And you know what? I got a lot of customers that support me, and whoever's going to do the right thing and be fair and act more toward everybody, that's the person I'm going to vote for in this very election. Because I'm tired of this mess, man. I can't even do my living and go about my living with these people harassing me on this petty stuff. They're doing damage to my properties. Beating holes in my middle doors. Who's going to compensate me for this? I work hard. I don't bother nobody. I don't steal. I don't rob. I make an honest living. I took that ice over there at 3709 I made some out of it. I put $100,000 of my hard earned money in that business. They harass me every day putting stickers on my car. Sabo knows what's going on. I talked to him about this. I've ventilated my frustrations, but I'm tired of it. So if I have to go to somebody who's going to do something, that's what I'm going to do. You contact my office and we'll set up a meeting with you and I Yeah, okay. Whatever. Thank you. Who's next? Hearing none, we will close public participation. Okay. Um, okay. Um, have a little miscommunication. We have a proclamation here uh, to read about the extra mile day. Jim Steiner, do you want to just come forward and tell us a little bit about this? Do you, you have a little bit of knowledge? Um, we had a proclamation here, and I agreed to, to read it tonight because I think it's fitting as to what the city is doing uh, in regards to neighborhood efforts and, and really fitting in the sense that the city of Belleville does go the extra mile. Uh, 2011, we made the All-American City Award. And uh, Jim, I apologize, I'm not sure what happened today, but it was kind of a crazy day, and I thought it was up here on the desk, and it wasn't. It's true that I have just a little bit of knowledge. <laughs> Um, it was a proclamation that it's unfortunate that it can't be read, but essentially there's a foundation called Extra Mile, Extra Mile America Foundation. And they have selected 300 cities to call, to ask them to join in for Extra Mile Day, which is, we were going to proclaim an Extra Mile Day November 1st, 2012, with the other 299 cities or whatever it was. And we crafted a proclamation that was special for our city kind of honoring our volunteers in our city and the amount of people that go the extra mile. And, um, you know, honoring things like the Paint the Town, the Southside Park Project, Bell Helping Belleville Service Day, and the, the continuous efforts of Belleville citizenry to, to step up when it's time to step up and go the extra mile. And there's a proclamation that sort of celebrate that. I will have the proclamation posted on the website tomorrow. And if anybody is interested in it, we will have copies of it. I apologize for the miscommunication. I had a um, one assistant out today scheduled and one unexpectedly, and so therefore I, uh, I just didn't, didn't realize it wasn't up here. I apologize. But I do appreciate your explanation, Jim, and it is, it is a very important thing that uh, Bell continues to work together 
in collaboration to do good things to support the community and make a difference. And uh, I do believe we go the extra mile, and we got to continue to do that because that's why uh, we have the great city we do. And there's still a lot of work to do, but there's certainly uh, there's certainly a lot of good efforts. Thanks, Jim. Uh, this time I will yes, ma'am. I didn't get his address or where he's talking about these apartments are. There was no name or address spoken with. My business address now, if you don't mind, I'll give it to you now. 3709 North West. I mean, I heard you talking, but I heard your name, Griffin, but we're supposed it's to be your name and address. Okay, and then, I'm sorry, and maybe I just... I, it's just that I would like to know who and where. Right, okay. Leo's group. Yeah, well, normally I ask. I guess we. He just gave his business address. Okay. He didn't give his phone address. Okay. Real five no toll. Thank you, sir. Okay. 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 Hearing none, I did close public participation. And we are back on uh, reading of the minutes. We have the minutes of the regular city council meeting held October 1st, 2012. What's your pleasure? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to approve the file of minutes. Motion by Alderman Heister, yeah. second by Alderman Consilio. <laughs> right discussion. All in favor of accepting and filing the minutes signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We have claims, payrolls, and disbursements. Uh oh, tell Mr. Alderman Anderson. Yes, Your Honor, I'd like to make a motion to, to um, excuse me, pay the claim, payrolls, and disbursements. Motion by Alderman Heister, do I hear a second? Second. Second by Alderman Meyer, do I hear a discussion? Yes, ma'am. Sorry, I wish I did not have time to give Jenny. Under the very first general fund, UND bank, $204,000. Those are required payments for the special business district for the trustees in the bank. That's Green Mountain, right? Yeah. Carlisle Green Mountain, Green Mountain Parkway. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Priscilla. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Paul. Aye. Roger Rodgewitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Seibert. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider? Aye. Mastro? Aye. Arlo? Aye. Motion carries. Is there any objections if we do the housing report and the treasury report together? I ask for a motion to approve the housing report and cash receipts today for fiscal year 2012-2013. The treasury report of city development funds and state of cash and investment for September 2012. What's your pleasure? So motion for Alderman Priscilla, second for Alderman Heisler. Discussion? All in favor of uh, accepting and filing these two reports signify saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next page. Zoning Board of Advisory of Reports. Zoning Board. Number 60, Jacob Kitchens. Request to sign variance to order to place 144 square foot sign at the property of 1701 North Charles Street and a C2 heavy commercial zoning district. Zoning Board of Appeals request be denied. I move that we. Agree with the zoning board of appeals and deny this request. Second, your honor. Motion by Alderman Kinsella, second by Alderman Heisler to concur with the zoning board and have this appeal be denied. Discussion. Is this that garage that faces? Um, yes. Right. Answer is yes. Yes. Anything else? All in favor of denying case number 60 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Case number 61, Michael E. Franks requests a use variance in order to use the property at 6 Lebanon Avenue as a church in a C2 heavy commercial district. The zoning Board's appeals request be approved. I make a motion that we comply with the recommendation of the zoning board and the proper audience. Motion by Alderman Meyer, do I hear a second? Second by Alderman Seibert, do I hear discussion? All in favor of case number 61, have the proper ordinance drawn, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Case number 62, Michael Wesselman. Requesting a use variance in order to use the property at 2nd story of the garage at 1916 North Church Street as an apartment in an A1 single-family dwelling district. The, uh, the motion failed to carry. No recommendation from the zoning board. Yes, sir. That we deny this Motion. Motion by Alderman Kinsella and a second by Alderman Heisler to deny case number 62 at the request. Discussion? Are there any parties present that have an interest in this? Are you, sir, here present? Yes. Okay, we're kind of really out of sync by asking that. 
I'll let you this time, but normally once we get to this point, we should have spoke during public participation. I'm sorry. No problem. Mike Lussman, 1960 North Church Street. Okay. So, obviously, we, I've got a uh, map of the house. There's a attached garage above it. Um, or the, or the garage, there's a the attached garage, living space above the garage. I think it'd be fairly good to be able to have, uh, obviously, you've got to have that as disposable income, to be able to have someone there. I would not bring anyone in to the place. Um, as you can see, there should have been a report that was printed off for you as far as doing a background check and everything else, as far as making sure we bring someone in that to be a high quality system as far as they're into the place above the garage. Um, obviously, a lot of the, there would be a lot of work that needs to be done, but I think it would also help as far as local contractors and stuff of that nature. All right, any other questions at the show? I don't know the, the true history of it. I know that people who owned the house before me, they used it just as a storage space. Um, I heard back in there. You usually put a bathroom in a kitchen. You, you would think so, right? So I mean, I, I don't know. It's, I'm presuming it used to be the actual house in 1916, and the house that I live in currently is actually built in addition to that, um, being that there is a garage, there's a bathroom, uh, kitchen, and everything else. And so I think it probably used to be people who lived there, um, but obviously now it's done as an A1. Thank you, sir. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to deny. Any further discussion from the council? All in favor of denying case number 62 signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries to deny. Okay, we have uh, next going on. Linda, you want to read these? Yeah. Uh, consider amendment of section 60-2-2 to add dormitory student dwelling and student to the list of selected definitions. I hear a motion to approve. Okay. Was it right when I did No, no. Okay, we have a motion by Alderman Byron. Yeah, who's yeah. the second? Okay. Second by Alderman Byron said. So this is a motion by. Uh, Alderman Meyer said, well, the word said, we're adding these because we've never had a university in our town before, and now we're running into things that we need to add to our code, as far as uh, dormitories, et cetera. So this being the first motion. We have a motion, we have a second. Roll call. I have a second. Do you answer your discussion? It's discussion. Sorry. Why did this component to leave? I don't know. It went to... Uh, uh, Emily's not here. It went to... Uh, it went to Eggen Eric, 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 so. but zoning, it went to zoning, it went to zoning, it was in one of the committee first, we first talked about it a while back, and then it ended up, I mean, I guess the question is how many committees can we send it to, but it, it was at zoning, we went and we sent it to zoning. Usually when things go to zoning, it comes right to here. It's part of the zoning code. It's part of the zoning code. Yeah, it's an amendment to the zoning code. And it's a result of that there may be a public hearing held by the zoning board of appeals. This is their recommendation after that public hearing. Which was during the normal zoning meeting. Right. Okay. 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 Um, how would these definitions impact if somebody wanted to be in a fraternity? I think a fraternity house is a... Uh, because that seems a student dwelling unit could be a fraternity house. Right? Emily, Emily happens to be at a conference today. So I know we've had those discussions, but I think as long as it meets the fire chief, as long as we had a very brief conversation, nothing in very detail, as long as it would still meet all the codes, uh, the number of square foot per bedroom of one of those homes, the number of people, all the fire codes, et cetera, you know, I think we it would still could potentially we don't these definitions would not include a fraternity or a sorority house because the definition of dormitory, I believe the one that's been approved, says that it's owned by the university. Right. Fraternities and sorority houses are normally uh, owned by the uh, fraternity or the sorority. Okay, okay. Um, and what you're asking us to prove is just this terminology. We're not changing any zoning at this time. No, the reason for the definitions and the reason for these changes is that because we're having a university, there are certain, certain terms, if you will, that. Uh, need to be included because they have certain aspects of their housing that are not present otherwise in the city. Correct. Correct. So what I'm asking is if we include this now in our zoning code, they have already bought some property. Does that then be a variance or 
since we are adopting these terms, is that included? It's not that they bought property, it would be whether or not they're using property. If they're okay. using property that's somehow or another in violation of what is being proposed here in the grant property. But I'm not sure what you're talking about okay. in terms of. All right. if, if, hypothetically, if a university bought a current home in an A1 single family, they could move in enough students with as many bedrooms as are legal without a change in zoning and without notifying the neighbors. If, if they did that in the future, depending on where they were located, they would have to come in as a special use and get, a, get that approved. Okay, so just because they happen to own property, if it is not currently occupied. Right, it's a question of use. Okay. Yes, sir. How are we going to handle the occupancy permits and inspections? Or does that even come into play? Bob, I think when you, you were at the meeting, which uh, we talked about their, their dean of students who's over there housing. Correct. Is going to work directly with you in your office. Correct. And then we're going to, they're going to uh, have, the, have the list, the roster, and they're going to report directly to Mr. Sable's office and work together to keep that to be smooth and simple. Well, will we be doing yearly inspections then, or periodically? <coughs> the way it's up, set up now is just initial inspection before they move the students in, we inspect the residents. And of course, if we had any problems, we would then re request to go, or they would, and they could request at any time too, if they had any doubts. We've had such cooperation from Lindenwood. I know we're, we're, we're working things out as we go. There probably could be more changes, more, more considerations here, but uh, We've had some excellent meetings with the parts cooperation and working relationships. I'm not worried about that. I'm just curious. Can we, can we, we do and, I, and I won't sit here and tell you that we've thought of everything so far because we've never had a university in our town before. It's a nice problem. And, and we always consider best case scenario. Right. But you want to be prepared for yeah. all the road. And we're trying to be. We're trying to be. That's why we're here tonight with this, this next step, this first step. Yes, ma'am. So they, I'm going to just take, for instance, Say the house next to me is a uh, three or four bedroom. So they can only move in two students per bedroom. These houses could just be anywhere throughout the city. No, I, I don't think that's the case at all. We're while we have a they have not released a master plan yet, but I think eventually what you're gonna see are some boundaries of their master plan that we'll be approving. It's very tough for them to do that because in all honesty, once they make that public, um, it, it puts a bullseye on anything they try to negotiate to buy. And I understand that from the city's point of view when we do things that deals. But I think it's very clear, you live in the east end of town, we wouldn't be we wouldn't be putting student housing in your in your ward. Well no, but I mean if you like um, any other town, there's people that rent out places in that. Oh, they're make Privately, they can do that. We're talking about right now stuff that the school owns, right, Mr. Well, yes, but, but also keep in mind that they're still going to be subject to the occupancy. <coughs> so to answer your question, uh, uh, Joe, I mean, they're not preempted in any manner from getting an exemption from the city's occupancy code. They're still going to have to meet those requirements. And instead of making the students individually come in, we're going to work with the dean of students, right, Bob? Correct. And that's what we're saying. Instead of, instead of having each student come in to get their own occupancy permit for their dorm, we're going to make the dean of students be the responsible party at Lindenwood to come in and get the uh, occupancy for those dormitories and those buildings that they own. Okay? We believe that, staff and I believe that that was an attorney, we believe that's the simplest and best way to handle that. Any other questions to this first motion? We have a motion and we have a second on the this item number four on page two, uh, roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Aye. Holmes. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Harlow. Motion carries. Next item. Consider amendment of section 60-6-19 special uses to add dormitory and student dwelling unit to the list of special uses. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a 
suggestions since numbers five through eight are so similar, we might do them as a group. He was just a <laughs> right here. Great mind. I got, we got so used to a long time doing those things, I got so used to changing that. Uh, is there any objections if we go ahead and include five, six, seven, and eight uh, as one motion, if Mr. Consilla would so make them? No. Okay. You have no problem. Is anyone else? Okay, Alderman Consilla, do you want to make a motion that we consider those? Uh, I think she'd have to read the six, seven, and eight. You want to do that? Sure. Consider amendment of section. 60-6-25 special uses to add dormitory and student dwelling units to the list of special uses. Number seven, consider amendment of section 60-6-44 special uses to add dormitory and student dwelling unit to the list of special uses. Consider amendment of section 60-6-50 special uses to add dormitory and student dwelling unit to the list of special uses. I move we make you ready for a piece. I have scored through eight, right? Actually, we need an ordinance later on. It could be uh, passed. I don't even realize that. Really this is the recommendations coming from this other board. This is for five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. With that being said, we have a motion. We have a second. They've all been read. I don't have a second. Second. Second by Alderman Hayden. Is that correct? Okay. Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Holt? Aye. Rodriguez? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Hart? Aye. Selsby? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Seibert? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Arlo? Aye. Motion carries. Oral reports. <coughs> Motion to approve a contract. Last for an associate for the amount of $14,750. Plus time and expenses with the total cost not to exceed 20000 to complete the West Bevel National Registry <coughs> Historic District nomination project. The city will be reimbursed 70% of the project cost by a grant from the Illinois Historic Preservation Agency. What's your pleasure? Session by Alderman Hart, second by Alderman Carpenter. Any discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Holt, aye. Rodriguez, aye. Carpenter, aye. Hart, aye. Selsby, aye. Hayden, aye. Seibert, aye. Martinson, aye. Elmore, aye. Schneider, aye. Musgrove, aye. Motion carries. Alderman Meyer. Your Honor, on behalf of the Planning Commission, I have to make a motion to approve vacating an easement at 2913 Titleist Drive, uh, lot 277 of the Archers, 14th edition, um, and have the proper ordinance drawn. Motion by Alderman Meyer. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Alderman Martinson. Do I hear any discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Consilla. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Rudgewitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Seibert. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Harlow. Aye. Motion carries. Alderman Seibert. Aye, Your Honor. I have uh, four motions from Motion by Alderman Seibert, do I hear a second? Second. Second by Alderman Silsby. Um, let me give a quick explanation as Tim did in uh, Streets and Grades. We bought several properties. As you, go, as you know, today we opened 17th Street. To get there, we had to buy quite a bit of right of way to do the road project. In a couple situations, we bought the entire property. So what this ordinance does now, or this, this motion, it allows us to do the legal description to release the front amount so we can consider selling those pro properties in the future um, that we own. Two cases we have houses, the other ones are lots. But if we ever, so we gotta just release back to the city that portion that we need on permanent record for the right of way. Does everybody understand? This is just cleaning up some, um, some, doing the, some due diligence for this road project, okay? Everybody understand that? So we have a motion and we have a second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Paul. Aye. Rudgewitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Seibert. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Arlo. Aye. Motion carries. I ask for
a motion to approve entering into a signed contract with EFK Bowen LLC in the amount of eighteen thousand four twenty six sixty one for bicentennial entranceway bridge using TIF funds. I'm sorry. Would you make that motion? Do we have, do we have a second? Second by Gabby Ridgewitz. Yes, sir. Have discussion. Alderman Hayden. Yes. Does this have to be done now? Uh, Tim? I, it doesn't bear with the, the chemical grant, does it? Well, Tim, our city engineer, Tim Gregowitz, will answer that. Um, the, the roadway is going to be paved this, this week, and the, and the bridge is an integral part of the roadway, so that the bridge needs to be designed in, in order to use this park, yes. We have an entrance into it now, correct? Well, there's a temporary entrance that has two uh, metal culverts that are there temporarily. It's just one lane, but it's going to be two lanes in when the bridge is built. And this is to get to the... This is to get to the Kimball Plaza. The parking lot. The parking lot, the, the gazebo, the, the bathrooms, the, the playground, the, the fishing pier, all that other stuff. The walking trails. It is the road is there now. It's able to handle vehicle traffic, correct? At the temporary structure, one vehicle can pass through there. So we could have signage that says, one lane bridge, etc. Well, I mean, this this bridge really needs to get built. So, for, but, but before we can build it, we got to design it. I see. I understand. How much are we looking at, just off the top of your head, that we're going to spend to build this bridge, and where's it going to come from? We, we discussed it in a previous meeting, but Tim, you want to give it to us? Yeah, there was a similar bridge um, built just south of town here. Um, same type of bridge. Uh, it was probably about seventy-five feet long. This one's going to be. 57 feet. That came in about 281,000. Um, this one's estimated to be about 250, 250,000. From from funding source. Well, Jamie, we had talked. It's going to have to go back to finance, but we have approximately what 800,000 plus left in the 17th Street project money. So that's what we were going to propose in the next finance meeting. Uh, as far as the funding source. That's the bond money, correct? That's the bond money that was used for 17th Street. This is an entranceway immediately a few feet off of 17th Street. Or I should say that's how deep. It's really Belva Crossing right here at that location. Any other questions? We have a motion, we have a second to approve the contract with EFK. Um, roll call. Aye. 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 Meyer, Hall, no. Graduates? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Hart? Aye. Selsby? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Seibert? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? No. Musgrove? Aye. Arlen? No. Ayes have motion carries. Motion to approve the Alderman Seibert. These are yours. I'm sorry. I'm glad to hear it. Take it. Motion by Alderman Seibert, do I hear a second? Second by Alderman Silsby, do I hear any discussion? Uh, just as the explanation was given in the meeting, uh, they kind of changed a few of the rules. Is the gentleman, he's not here right now, is he? You want to just explain it to him real quick? It's just a slight modification of what we've been approving in the past. Yes, this was approved earlier in the year, either uh, January or February. Um, and, and, and part of the ordinance, it gave uh, a radius um, around the, the site. Uh, the EPA came back and said that you can't give a radius, you need to give a legal description. So that was the only change. They changed the radius to a legal description, and this is how it's going to be done from here on out with these uh, groundwater ordinances. So that, that was the only change. It still encompasses the same area. It just gives a legal description. So we have a motion and we have a second to approve this change. Uh, Aye. Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Hull? Aye. Seibert? Aye. Aye. Graduates? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Hart? Aye. Silsby? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Seibert? Aye. 
Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Arliss? Aye. Motion carries. All of the cyber. And motion to approve the low bidder to the bank excavating in the amount of $33,610 for citizens for retaining walls. So moved, John. Motion by Alderman Simon. Do I hear a second? Second, Your Honor. Second by Alderman Carpenter. Do I hear any discussion? Yes, sir. The stated this was 10 3 2. What, where is this retained wall? What's the need of it? Jason, do you want to explain how it collapsed or whatever? It's a uh, citizen park, lower softball diamond. There's a uh, railroad tie retained wall there currently, and it's failed. It was, it was built probably in the 80s, is what we're guessing. It's, we've condensed it down from about about a third of the size. You can condense the size down just to save money. So just replacing an existing wall that failed. They're gonna by doing that they're gonna be tapering a little bit more, a little more terracing, a little less railroad tie. We had this on our list to work into the masonry schedule, but it was a year or two out. And this past year I think it's fair to say that the spring rains and all of a sudden it just this went rapidly um, started falling apart on us unexpectedly. So what we've done in the budget is, uh, Jason, tell me if I'm wrong with Jim, but we're shifting funds that we were gonna use on a retaining wall, the parking lot improvements over at Nichols Center, which is not, not, nowhere near as bad as this now. And we're gonna prioritize this this year and we'll have to come back to consider that in the, in the future budget, okay? So the funds, we're, we're using money that was appropriated in the budget, we're just, uh, uh, Staff-wise, we're recommending to shift them because this became an emergency situation for safety. Everybody understand? We have a motion. We have a second. Roll call. Aye. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Hall. Aye. Rajewitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cybers. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Harlow. Aye. Motion carries. Alderman Anderson's not here. Alderman, uh, who's on that committee? I'll make a motion for the first one, Your Honor. Okay. My board uh, to approve uh, the uh, expenditures for the uh, South 16th uh, manhole, uh, $19,334. Second. And that's going to be by uh, Eric. Correct? Eric Fleming? You've got a second by Alderman Silsby, motion by Alderman uh, Hayden to approve that project on South 16th Street with Eric. Any discussion? Roll call. Eisler? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Hall? Aye. Rajewitz? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Hart? Aye. Selsby? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Cyber? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Harlow? Aye. Motion carries. The next item is, uh... Your Honor, I'll, I'll make the motion. Please. To approve the on behalf of the Matt Pursuit Committee to approve the escrow agreement for Plum Hill Phase 4. Motion, so, Your Honor. motion by Alderman Heisler, right here, second. Second. Second by Alderman Hayden. Discussion? Roll call. Heisler? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Holt? Aye. Rajewitz? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Hart? Aye. Silsby? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Arlen? Aye. Motion carries. Next one. Who wants to? Alderman Martinson. Your Honor, on behalf of the Finance Committee, I move to approve the contract with EWR for the library renovation issue. So moved, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Martinson, second by Alderman Meyer. Discussion? Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. I, I submitted a full uh, statement for the record and it into the minutes to the uh, city clerk out of brevity. I'm not going to read the entire thing. I just want to state again this evening, Your Honor, I have nothing against the library. I've learned a lot from the library. I've heard the arguments from, from Ms. Meyer and others that we own the building. There are things within there that I could possibly support, such as the uh, ADA requirement, because it's a structural deficiency, and by law, we as the owners have to fix it. But there's other things within there, Your Honor, that could be deemed as cosmetic, uh, operational and it's coming out of a large portion is coming out of TIF 3 funds. The city and the library have had two separate accounts for years and years and years and, I, and they have their own separate taxing base and I think that was done by design and done for a reason. 
even as I noted in my letter, perhaps maybe in, in bad times to keep the city from raiding the library box. But the people in tip three, Your Honor, and you live in it, and Ward five is basically all tip three. We have roads crumbling. You have South Lake Street and West Lincoln that we tried to do this year, and we ran short on funds. It looks like a mine field blew up there. And I can't look those people in the eyes. You walk down Rob Avenue, <coughs> sidewalks. These are all funds that can be used within TIP 3. The people in TIP 3 are disproportionately paying to fix the library or the others are not. But it's even, it's not even a question of, of also the, uh, the roads. You know, we've heard and heard from, from Chief Clay and others. We need $300,000 to bring the computer system to the police department up to, to the 21st century. Mr. Elmore in, in, in his web page says that uh, we uh, really in Sacred Bell through technology advanced communication systems for police, fire, and city departments. There's money there, Your Honor, that we could be using. And we're not planning and prioritizing the needs of the city. And we have people moving out because of it. And that's going to affect even the libraries of uh, patrons. We have people moving out, Your Honor, because of crime and, and, and the roads not being fixed. And that, again, my vote is not against the library. It is for better roads and for public safety. And on the hate, I certainly respect your, your opinion. I will say, though, in, in defense of this administration the last eight years, at, at Ward 5, this is very near and dear to me, we have, we have fixed probably more roads in Ward 5 in the last several years than just about anywhere. And it, they have tremendous needs still. There's no two ways about it. But we have 17th Street completed today, 23rd Street's being worked on, 22nd Street was last year, 11th Street by your house, 10th Street was done, Cleveland Avenue, State Street, uh, and the list goes on. The people on West Lincoln will get their road attended to the next year, but there's no sense in going in there with a patch job. We need to do it right and we need the budget. 8th Street we're looking at for CDBG probably two years at the most, but we're going to get it. We've been working on a lot of roads in, 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 in Ward 5, which is your ward and my ward. But they're all the wards, they, there's roads. I will tell you that they happen to take a back seat for a long time in other projects. Uh, but we're, we're working and we're, we're doing some, you know, but we have to spread it around. I happen to support this on the library because we have carpeting that's uh, falling apart. And if we get a trip and fall, we're in the lawsuit. And we don't have, what? If it's a liability concern, we should be dealing with it right well, now. Well, we're going to be dealing with it. We, we, we're patching it. The staff is working on it. But it's time to replace it. It's 16, 17 years old. It's time. It's worn out. And we have literally, Leander, how many people a year visit the library? About 200,000. 200,000 people uh, a year visit that library to educate themselves and to uh, hopefully uh, help move themselves in, in better times. Um, it's about balance. It's about balance things. So. Uh, I hear you. You're duly noted. Your, your thing will be entered into the, to the minutes, and, and, and we appreciate that. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Um, 200,000 said use the library. How many of them are citizens of Belmont? How many of them live in tip three? If we, each alderman, would go and knock on 10 doors, five each way, and ask them if they use the library, how many of them would say yes? I don't, Mrs. Alderman Schneider, I don't know that we're here. The library no, it, is our, no, it's our yeah. building. It is the city's building. It's no different than the firehouse. Okay, we're working on right now, we're looking at ways to deal with the police department. I'm investigating a ton of things and looking at to, to make those repairs. Then maybe we should have a contract that they pay us rent because they're using our building. They have their own taxing body. Pay us rent, we put that money in an escrow account, and when something needs to be done, it's there. The people in tip three, I really feel sorry for them. I'm sure glad I don't. I would not live in tip three. Well, I'm going to step up to the microphone. Go ahead and, and, and give your take on this. You've been here long enough. Well, I would like to, I mean, the people in tip three pay for everything, and I think it's wrong. Well, the library is not as important. It's important, don't get me wrong. But if you went five people on each side of you and asked them, how many of them use the library? How many of your neighbors do you know use the library? Leander's our new library director in the last five years. Now, Leander? Leander? Uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Give us uh, some information. If you were to go to any city that any of you consider to be a thriving city, I 
privacy. Three things that city will have. Parks, good police, and libraries. Guaranteed. You cannot neglect one for the other. You must invest in all three. This library, this building, was built in 1916, nearly 100 years old, and it is still being used. We need to invest in this library before it's gone. The second oldest library in the entire state. We cannot neglect it. Yes, we do have some of our own money. The library cannot do it by ourselves. We have to have city's help. We have to have the taxpayers' help. If we have to, then yes, we will go and raise the tax levy. But I promise you, if I do that, we will be having this exact same conversation for the exact same reasons. No, Your, your Honor, let me, let me finish the point on, that I made. If you raise your tax levy, it's going to affect everybody in, in the city, not just the people within the city. And again, I want to state that. I, I totally respect everything that the library has to offer. But, Your Honor, I just talked to two more people today that are planning on moving. And they're moving because of crime, and they're moving because they don't feel that the city, through road maintenance, is doing enough. The, the city, we, we got to stop the bleeding, Your Honor. And we got to start planning and prioritizing. There's things that we can do, prioritizing money to, to use it for a better computer system for the police department and start finding ways to you're, you're going to have nobody going to your library, sir, if, if, if the people keep moving out of the city. Oh, okay. and we're misunderstanding that point. And I don't know how much more stronger I can make you understand. Well, all that Hayden, I think what we're trying to say is we know we got challenges, but we also need balance. I believe we're doing a good job at balancing things. Crime is not run at rampant, but the chief and the police department do a great job and they have their hands full. There's always going to be a few people that are going to want to leave the city. We had some people contact my office recently and move back to Belleville because they had moved to Old Fallon a few years ago. And I thought that was pretty uh, unique. So it, it goes, the door swings both ways. We've got to keep working hard to raise the quality of life, raise safety and security, and continue to grow our city. Attract new businesses. We've got to have balance. We worked on downtown. We're working on the West End. We're working on our shopping center. We're working on roads throughout. I mean, we equally spent money on Frank Scott Parkway, on Dapper and Drive, on a host of other cities. The chief knows, he and I met again last week. We're working on looking at some ways of possibly uh, doing some of the things. And, and what I would propose in the not too distant future, when we do some work with the police department, at that time we will include computer updates, which hopefully isn't going to be too far away, that will better marry and help them and connect them with housing, et cetera. We're working, but we, it's like anything, you have to prioritize. It's like at home. We don't have endless pots of money, but TIF 3 has helped us do a lot of things throughout the city. TIF 3 is extremely large, it covers the most of the city, and, and, and almost everybody has benefited from its, from its uh, uh, the, uh, the stuff that the money has raised. So we, we really have to try to be fair about uh, <coughs> spreading it around. Alderman Elmer? One quick note that you brought up the other night, the finance, I believe you talked about private donations. Yes. And I do agree with most of what Alderman Hayden is saying. Um, but, yeah, I, I do wish my ward had as many street jobs as, as your ward has got, Alderman Hayden, because your ward has got a lot. Granted, I'm sure you've got They're paying for it, Mr. Elmore. They're paying for it. Right. With their tip dollars. That they're right. assessed on their, their, their tax bill. But private donations was a part of this equation, correct? Correct. And what were the, those numbers? One hundred and twenty thousand dollars that we already have in private donation, and we're still listening. One hundred twenty thousand of the total package. Of the total package, which is three hundred and forty-four thousand in total. So roughly a third of it is from private funding. Okay. Thank you. Jamie. But my. Hold on. Jamie, Major. I'd like you to answer that question because I, I saw you right. <laughs> I just have one comment to make about the distribution of real estate taxes throughout the city. People who live in TIF 3, a very, very small portion of their tax bill goes to police and fire pensions. So should we say they can't reap the benefits of our police and fire department because they're not paying for it? Everybody outside TIF 3 pays for it? That's not the way it works. The taxes are distributed amongst the city. Everybody reaps the benefits of everybody. Exactly. 
And your taxes virtually, virtually, <coughs> virtually am I correct, Jamie? Once tip three would go away, they'll be still the same. Basically the same. Yes, sir. I have three points I'd like to make. First of all, when people say that, well, we should have the library raise its tax, <coughs> those are our citizens. It's the same people that belong to the city of Belleville are in the tax district or the library. So when you come out and say tax the library, you're taxing our citizens. Another thing I'd like you to consider is that the tax money that came in for years that went into tip three was swept aside because it went into tip three and the library didn't get that money. Okay? So we owe the library, in a sense, to take care of them because we swept their funds, some of their funds, into tip three. Okay? We now also, system. when you talk about the uh, other wards, when they say this money belongs to tip three, remember that when tip three money was put together in a tip, the other wards are paying for quite a few things that that tip money was swept from. So it does not, quote, belong to tip three. It belongs to the citizens of Belleville. And it's our job to distribute it in an equitable and reasonable manner. But it does not belong to any one group. The people in tip three have paid for it, toward it, but so has everybody in every ward. Our taxes are the same no matter what ward you're in. Your taxes don't go up because you're in a tip. So when this is not, this is my money and I'm going to keep it, it doesn't work that way. And how dare you do this and not completely explain it to the audience. The audience should know that this money does not belong to any one group and that we have an obligation to take care of our library because of the tips. And that's a perfectly good use of tip money. Thank you. But I bet if you took, I'll learn this Schneider, but I bet if you took a poll, would people rather have the library fixed or their streets and sidewalks fixed? You're going to get their going on the streets and sidewalks fixed. And how many of the people that attend this library are paying taxes? How many of them are renters? I mean, they don't pay property taxes then. You don't think that's in the rent? It's in the directive that's in the rent, Lieutenant um, Schneider. I mean, you pay rent. You think the landlord's not factoring in? Um, Leotis is here. I'm sure he'd tell you that you have to factor in all of your cost when you charge your rent. You got to, you, he's got to pay those bills. So indirectly, a, a, a tenant is paying it, but maybe not directly it has the tax bill in their name. So, you know, we can have this philosophical thought all night. But the library, this has been going on for some time. The library needs these repairs, and, and it's on the thing tonight for to prove EWR, and Mr. Reichert has helped with that grant several years in a row. He's very familiar. Uh, having him do this, actually, is he's, he's extremely familiar, and it's going to be, uh, he's the right choice for this job because he's helped us, helped me back with Harriet, and, and before, before Leander, uh, he's, he's uh, done a lot of work and a lot of time uh, with this project in the past, making himself familiar, looking at ADA compliance and all the other things that we have to look at to keep this thing very uh, operable and safe and, 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 as, and keep it up because it is a great building. This is just two follow-up comments. First of all, I want to thank Jamie for uh, pointing out uh, what, what some people recognize, especially the fact that the city of Bellows still, to my knowledge, is 21. I know we had a couple that had terminated, but I don't believe they've been finalized. Oh, yes, they have. We're down to 18, maybe, right? right? Thank you. Give them the money back to. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Here right. now. How, Here many now. Down, how many are we down to now? Um, with the sales tax, 19. Okay. 19 tips. You know, the disparity of, of, of the tips creates exactly what she had pointed out. Some people in, in, in uh, Ward. Uh, Four and, and, and eight are paying a, a higher percentage towards the, the general levy, and that's part of the reason why, in my opinion, with, with the, the greater number of tips, is, is we, we can't get enough money in the general fund, and also probably levy for police officers. And then with Mr. Casilla's point, basically, if, if I'm understanding tonight what we're doing, or, or, or the rationale is we're rebating the tip money back that we're already taking from the library through the tip. If 
I'm understanding what his proposal was. I did not make a proposal, but basically we have an obligation to take care of the library because of that, the facts I stated. Mr. Gibbon, back to my Your Honor, I'd like to call for a question. We have, we have a motion and we have a second on the floor. To approve the contract, can you get back to my second motion? Yes, other comments, Your Honor. I'm sorry. Yeah, other comments, too. I'll give one more comment. Do you have a comment? I have a question about the total package is approximately $320,000, you said? The renovations? Yes. Actually, the total cost of the renovations was about $750,000 because we did not get the grant. We have scaled it down to absolute essentials, which is the $344,000 we are presenting. Okay. And of that, of what you're considering essential, you're including new carpet as an essential? It is. It's a trip hazard. It could be retightened. It would cost more money to pull up an old, ragged carpet than it would to rip it up and replace it. It's not worth it. Do you understand that one of the biggest expenses that I learned in the carpet is the installation, right, Bill? Because we have to remove all the books, the whole thing. It's a labor intensive. So whether you're repairing it or whether you're doing new, the labor is almost as much as the carpet or more. Is that correct? More. So it's more. So that's where the money is in with the labor, moving the whole kit and caboodle aside and out of there so they can lay this carpet. That's why it's only done once every 17 to 20 years. It's a big task. And it needs to be done. The tax levy issue. Did the library raise their tax this year? We did. And of that new money that is coming in from the raised taxes, what portion of that is going towards this project? None of it. That's all going towards salary and benefits. Because it's going for? Salary and benefits. Correct. And there's no two ways about it. The city helps the library in some other ways now. They know that. We have consciously for the last, Linda, long time, you've been here quite a while. I mean, there's a, we help them in other ways. If we were to make our library total sufficient, self-sufficient, they'd either have to raise the levy so high that taxpayers and all of us would be very concerned, or we'd have to shut it down and we'd have no library. I mean, we do the bookkeeping and the finance. We do the payroll. We work, we take care of the maintenance. Certainly police and fire takes care of all buildings, but we take care of, I'm trying to think what else. IT support. Yeah, IT support. They come up and help IT support. So, I mean, we're. So we're paying an incredible amount of money for people to take books off the shelf, move them, and find these cars to get along as a safety issue. Well, we're supporting what we believe is a cultural base of this city. As Leander said, this is one of the oldest libraries in the state. It has a fabulous reputation. It's been a part of educating many of our children and grandchildren of the past. And it's got a tremendous value to our city, to the core values. But to be told, well, this is an old building and all I'm hearing about is carpeting. It's not just carpeting, it's lighting. Carpeting, new main entrance, new circulation desk. We're locating computers, installing a computer lab. We are closing off. That's luxury items. None of those are necessary other than the ADA. I beg to differ. I do believe they are all essential. Well, I think it comes from perception. When you walk up and tell me how old your building is, and I'm thinking my house is old when that building was built, I think it's just a different perception. I don't consider a new carpet a safety issue. I don't consider a new desk a safety issue. You have the right to vote against it. We have a call for the question. We have a motion and we have a second to approve. It's E, number one. Okay, I'm sorry. Motion by Alderman Martinson to make one. Motion to approve the contract with EWR for the library renovations. Motion and a second. Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Hall. No. Rogerwitz. Aye. Carpenter. No. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. No. Seibert. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. No. Musgrove. Aye. Harlow. No. Ayes have it.
Next item. Uh, Your Honor, I have a motion to approve the 2012 audit. So move, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Martin, second by Alderman Cyber. Discussion. Roll call. Eisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Hall. Aye. Rudgewitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Harlow. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Kevin, you didn't have to say a word. You did good. Uh, motion to execute, uh, this year still you know, motion to execute, I ask for a motion to execute a non-disclosure agreement with Cameron. Uh, if you want to somebody make a motion first of all, then we'll explain. Oh. Motion by the Cyber, second by the Meyer. Jamie, you want to give us just a just two sentences of what this is about? Um, municipal electric aggregation issue that's going to be on the ballot on November 6th. This is an agreement with Ameren that Ameren can release to us all their uh, client information for the citizens within the city so that the city can start organizing it and be ready if that ballot should pass. Um, if it doesn't, we won't do anything with the data. But essentially all it's saying is that we won't disclose that data to the whole wide world with people's names and account numbers and everything. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. This is a part of, uh, if it would pass, this council agreed to put it on the agenda, uh, on the ballot, about the electrical aggregation where people could choose. Well, it is on the ballot. It's on the ballot. I'm sorry. We did that. I'm saying uh, to save money on their electric, for us to save money. You can still opt out after this would have passed, but this is a chance for taxpayers to, to save money, and that's why we took it forward. So. And, and this motion isn't confirming anything. All it's, it's doing is if, if I can get this signed and get it back to Amber, they take over a week to process everything and give me a list of clients that we can be ready if it would pass to go through the list. So are we a kind of middleman then? Assuming this would pass, Aaron gives the information to us and we give it to whoever gains this new contract? Um, Good Energy, the consultant that was hired right. as a consultant to help with the bidding process for the, um, the electric suppliers, and they would need essentially not not from the beginning, everybody's name, address, and number. They just need technically the number of um, residents. They just know what they're bidding at. Right. Got it. Thank you. What? Yes. Can I ask what does the city pay or do or give or receive for if this does pass? What does it cost the city? Cheaper electricity costs, right? But well, we got, we got, yeah. we're yeah. not. This is this is private home. We're really all we're doing is provide this for our citizens. Just like we, just like we, uh, you, I guess, Jamie, how long ago did we do it? Where we ended up making a contract with Glacial. 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 And, and we got, we bought energy cheaper for the city. This gives the homeowner the opportunity to do that. They can choose to opt out, <coughs> but it gives them a chance for the, this group on behalf of the city to do that and save money for our citizens. And citizens can do that now, but what, what this is is it provides Big, Power That's right. And other cities are going to be Lincoln. Yeah, by, by, there will be several other cities are doing this too. I think the county is. And if they all pull this together uh, with our with us this, this group that we have, believe me, we're going to save some money on electricity. So that's that's the whole purpose is to try to do what's right for the citizens. Okay. So we have a motion and we have a second to approve um, F item F. Okay, any further discussion? Roll call. High school. Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Hall? Aye. Rogerwitz? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Hart? Aye. Silsby? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Seibert? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Harlow? Aye. Unanimous. Alderman Silsby. Your Honor, on behalf of the Police and Fire Committee, I make a motion to approve a letter of understanding to modify the dog handler language and a letter of understanding for changing the language to the exam of Assistant Fire Chief for the City of Belleville. So moved. Thank you, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman uh, Silsby, second by Alderman Seibert. These are uh, some letter language agreements that were brought forward by the union. We had the attorneys looking over. Uh, obviously, I'm trying to look it over because it was part of what we talked about during some, some of the, yeah, you saw it too. So uh, just some general housekeeping, I guess, best way to say it, right, Chief? Nothing earth-shattering, but it was something that we all agreed to. So 
We have a motion, we have a second. I'd ask for a roll call vote. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Hull. Aye. Rodgewitz? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Hart? Aye. Silsby? Aye. Cage? Aye. Cyber? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Ostro? Aye. Motion carries. I ask for a motion to set the date of the Joint Review Board annual meetings for all active TIF districts for Friday, November 2nd, 2012, at the respective times listed in the attached memo. We did this because this is only for this year now. We found that I think it'll go a lot quicker. The taxing bodies have asked that we schedule them closer together because they don't anticipate long breaks. So this is the set the meeting for November 2nd. I ask for a motion. Oh. Motion by Alderman Meyer, second by Alderman Martinson. Discussion? There's three tips that were closed. They will not be on this. <coughs> They will be for one final time. Yeah, because they were. Action was taken. I'm sorry. Yes, they yeah. Be yeah, the, the final, you're right, that's correct. The, the final closure occurred in nine years, so we'll have to still have a brief uh, overview of those two. But really, well, there's very well. Three of them. Four, no, five, six, and seven, right? Tips five, six, and seven were closed, but we, they still will be included in this uh, joint board meeting. And this is it will be advertised. After tonight's meeting, we'll advertise it, and uh, all the taxing bodies will be notified, and uh, we'll be here just like we did last year. Okay, we need, I, at this one here, I think we can just have it all in favor. All in favor to set the meeting date, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion, motion carries. At this time, I ask for a motion to nominate Tom Peters as the public member nominee for the Joint Review Board annual meetings for all active TIF districts to be held Friday, November 2nd, 2012. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Motion by Alderman Meyer, second by Alderman Cyber. Discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Hull? Aye. Rodgewitz? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Silsby? Aye. Cage? Aye. Cyber? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? No. Musgrove? Aye. Arlen? Aye. Motion carries. Communications. Communication from Cairo Med requesting permission to hold the third annual Cairo Med Luau 5K and the first Main Street Mile on January 26, 2013, starting and ending at Lindenwood. If there's no objection, I'll read the Communication from the Belleville Area Humane Society requesting permission to hold the Halloween Pet Parade and Costume Contest at 2 p.m. on Saturday. October 27, 2012, in downtown Belleville, and requesting to close West Main Street from 510 West Main to 104 West Main from 145 until 245 p.m., and requesting police presence for the beginning and ending of the parade. They understand they will be charged approximately $50 per hour. They are also requesting barricades, each at 1st and West Main, 2nd and West Main, 3rd and West Main, 4th and West Main, and one of the parks and rec parking lot. Communication from St. Clair County Historical Society requesting permission to host its 19th annual Candlelight House Tour on Sunday, December 9, 2012. It will be held from approximately 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Motion by Alderman Cyber, do I hear a second? Second by Alderman Martin, so do I hear a discussion? Usually it's a Sunday, isn't it, Jim? Or is that Saturday? It's a Saturday morning. Saturday morning. It's a weekend. It's a weekend. It's a weekend. I did it last year, but I think it's a Saturday. And are we charging the Humane Society? Uh, we explained that there'll be a minimum amount of place. It's in there. It's in there. No, I understand you think I just wasn't clear on where we were. No, we, I mean, we think we think this group made it pretty clear that there was no, you know, additional. So we're going to, they're going to use volunteers to put the barricades up. We're going to have minimal amount of police and we're going to try to work with them to try this. Okay? Anybody else? We have those three communications. If there's no objections, all in favor of the three of them, uh, the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. We have uh, no petitions, we have no resolutions. We have ordinances. I'd ask for a motion to read by title only. Ordinances number 7632, 7633, 7634, 7635, 7636, 7637. Uh -huh. 
Motion by Alderman Silsby. Second, Your Honor. And second by Alderman um, Heisler. All of, yes. Uh, Your Honor, on uh, Ordinance 7633, uh, I'd like to make a uh, sub amendment. <laughs> well, let's do this. Are we reading these as a group? First of all, are we doing that? Yeah. Let's read them as a group, but let's, let's hold, let's do 7633 separate, okay? Okay. So 7632, then we'll skip from 34 down to 37. Uh, by title only and as a group. All in favor of the motion to read by title only, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Ordinance number 7632, an ordinance in case number 55, Jill and Daryl Richardson. Ordinance number 7634, an ordinance amending chapter 60, the Bible Zoning Code, by amending portions of section C. Ordinance number 7635, an ordinance in case number 61, Michael E. Franks. Ordinance number 7636, an ordinance vacating an easement at 2913 Titleist Drive, lot 277 of the Arctic's 14th edition. Ordinance number 7637, an ordinance amending chapter 52 traffic under revised code of ordinances. Motion to approve ordinance 7632, 33, 34, 30, I mean, not 33, 30, 30, 35, 30, 30, 30. <coughs> He said he eliminated 33. We have, sec we have a second? Second, Your Honor. <coughs> okay. Everybody clear? <coughs> We're not voting on 7633 at this time. Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Rudowitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Selsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Seibert. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Mustro. Aye. Harlan. Those ordinances passed. At this time, I'd ask for a motion for 7633. Motion by Alderman Silsby. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Do you have a. a, a yes. Uh, if I could get. Everybody's got a copy of this. If we would take a look at page two, the last sentence in section one. The last sentence. Uh, it makes. It's a. We need a clarification for the uh, what it states. It says decisions made by the sewer department. It should be sewer collection department personnel may be appealed to the city treasurer. We uh, I don't want the make a mistake that the this means they, anything to do with sewers. This has to do with sewer collection department. You, you accept that exchange? Okay, so we, we that, that's very, very good. I'm glad I didn't catch that, but that was certainly the intent. So everybody understands that the motion and the, and, and the, the second, and Mr. Uh, Dr. Sylvia Cruz, uh, uh, Alderman Musgrove's uh, uh, amendment to that. Hearing that, roll call. Yeah, I agree. Read, I'm sorry. Ordinance number 7633, an ordinance amending chapter 38, sewers by amending portions of sections thereof. We have a motion to approve. Sorry, Your Honor. We have a motion to approve and a second. Well, that was for time. Okay. The first motion was to read by title only. Let's do that. All in favor to read that by title only. What she just read signifies saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Now, Alderman Silsby, were your motion, you're going to say motion to approve the title, but uh, 7633. Second. Jim seconds it, and you accept his amendment to that last line. And everybody understands that, like, including the Correct. Right. The amendment is the right. We read before the right. most. We just got a little bit ahead of ourselves. Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Casella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Hull. Aye. Rudowitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Selsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Moscow. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Solicitor's license request from Frank G. Du Bois to solicit for four C4 Connections LLC. What's your consideration? Approve or deny? Motion from Alderman Meyer to approve. I hear a second. Second by Alderman Silsby. Any discussion? Yes, sir. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of approval signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Ms. Lay has some new business? Yes. I think we had a no vote. We did. Okay, note that there was a no vote. 
Uh, but, the, but the eyes truly carried the, the, carried the conversation. Um, Ms. Clay has some new business other than motor fuels. Is there anything else for anybody else? Motor fuels claim the amount of $23,012.95. What's your pleasure? Thank you, thank you. Motion by Alderman Seibert, second by Alderman Heisler. Discussion on motor fuel claims. Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Priscilla. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Holt. Oh, Rajewitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Vasilski. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Arlen. Aye. Motion carries. We're going down to, we just ask for a motion to go into executive session so we can have a brief conversation about a union uh, side letter of agreement. That's the only thing I have. Anybody else have it? There's nothing else tonight. You have nothing else ready tonight. I uh, have asked for a motion for that purpose to go in for so a move. motion by Alderman uh, Kinsella right here, second. Second by Alderman Barr, any discussion? All in favor of going in executive session, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh, Fire Chief Jamie. Because we didn't have that verbiage spelled out at that time clearly, uh, technically before the payroll person could make that change, authorize it, um, we had to have this, this language added. We just, it was overlooked. But it was certainly the letter and the spirit of the attempt of the intent of all of us negotiating, the union and the city administration, staff, all of us agreed this is what we intended to do. So at this time, I'm asking for a motion to approve this sign letter agreement with the clerical of local 50. So moved, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Thank Martinson, you. second by Alderman Cyber. Discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Myers. Aye. Holt. Aye. Rajewitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden, Aye. Seibert, Aye. Martinson, Aye. Elmore, Aye. Schneider, Aye. Musgrove, Aye. Motion carries. I ask for a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Alderman Meyer, second by Alderman Schneider. All in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.